to the SEC Unfiltered platform. I am your host, Dave Shume. And my, oh my, has the narrative changed about Steve Sarkeesian and the Texas Longhorns heading into their first season in 2024 in the SEC? Uh, I'm fired up about it. I think a lot of people are fired up about it. I think Texas is very is positioned, I should say, really well to make the move to the SEC. I think it starts on both sides of the line of scrimmage. They have uh, improved the personnel on both sides of the football, really looking at Kyle Flood, co-OC offensive line coach, came with Steve Sarkeesian from Alabama. And obviously Bo Davis did a good job. I know he's no longer at Texas, but I thought he did a phenomenal job up in the room, developing the room from a personnel standpoint overall. Now you bring in Coach Baker, Coach Kenny Baker, coming over from the Miami Dolphins, the assistant coach there. So I think Texas is, is – if we, I would like to talk about this. If we went in reverse, if we, if we went backwards May 28th, 2024 – or sorry, 2023, and we discussed where Texas was at that point, I think a little bit, hey, I want, I'm re- I want to see it to believe it. I think people were waiting on Steve Sarkeesian to win that – Maybe not that specific game, but just put a season together, and he did. So uh, it would be interesting to see what the topic of conversation with the Longhorns would be if Texas was coming off, mm, I don't know, maybe another 8-4 and four type season that Steve, Steve Sarkeesian had his second year at Texas when they lost in the Alamo Bowl. So something like that. What would be kind of the narrative rolling in with that? Well, that, that's not the case. They're coming off a Big 12 title their last year in the Big 12. Uh, a fantastic year, finished – what, over the three seed going into the playoff, loss to Washington in the Sugar Bowl, a fantastic game. But Texas made the playoffs. But are they back? I'm going to have to see a little bit more um, than just one season. I think they would tell you that. I think Steve Sarkeesian, uh, the Texas fan base, most realistic fans would tell you that. But I'm here today to tell you, what would be a what would be considered a successful 2024 campaign for Steve Sarkeesian and his Texas Longhorn football pro, Texas Longhorn football program going into 2024? So as I do all the time, we're going to start it off first. But let's give our let's give a shout out to our one of our friendly sponsors, here, Prize Picks. Before we get to it, download the Prize Picks app or go to PrizePicks.com and use code SECU for a first deposit match up to a hundred dollars. It's a fun way to gamble a little bit, guys. I, I've enjoyed it. Uh, I've showed some other people uh, some things to do. I don't think they have college baseball stuff, but they still have some NBA final stuff. As we're kind of getting into the dog days of summer where the sports are kind of dying off a little bit, they may have some college World Series stuff when we get to that in two weeks. But don't forget to check out our buddies at Prize Picks. Again, first-time users use code SECU. But back to Texas, first year in the SEC. What would be success? What would be success for the Longhorns in 2024? I think – most people are going to be on the same page here. And, I, and I'll get to the black and white like I do with all these what is successful segments for everybody. We, we're, we're going in alphabetical order. I'm on the Texas Longhorns. we got four left. Um, but like I do with some other ones, some other teams, if you follow these segments, I'm giving one or two key points to keep an eye on if I was a fan base or a staff member of these teams that I would like to see some improvement or um, so production out of this group outside of just the black and white win total. We'll talk about the schedule. We'll talk about a black and white win total, what I think 9, 10, 11 wins, playoff periods, whatever it may be, would suffice for a successful season at Texas in 2024. But I think right off the bat, it's got to be. I mentioned it earlier. Bo Davis leaving the Texas Longhorns to go to SEC rival now, um, LSU. But what does that mean? What does that mean for defensive line coach – Kenny Baker, coming over Bennett, Western Kentucky, was with the Miami Dolphins in 2023. He inherits a pretty good room on the interior. He inherits a pretty good room on the interior. I mean, you got guys like Vernon Broughton, redshirt senior. They brought in a transfer from Arizona. Uh, Teola Savea does a good job over there. I, you go back and watch his film. You like how he plays um, with good leverage. Is he more of a two-gap guy? Knows. I think he's versatile. I think he could play both sides. Uh, Bill Norton. Coming over from Georgia, was in Arizona as well. He's going to be in Austin this summer. I think Dre Bledsoe is a kid that could come on. Sadir Mitchell is a kid. If he can be more consistent, play with good pad level, I think he could be a really good two-gap guy. Um, I, I'm really just kind of fired up to see what Kenny Baker does with these um, – with some of the clay and mold he has. 
it, it, what do you have? This isn't going to be Byron Murphy. Uh, I don't think they have a Tavondre Sweat on this unit, but they do have some key pieces. Like I said, I like Vernon Broughton. I think Alfred Collins will be involved in that. I mentioned the two Arizona transfers. I mentioned Jeremy Bledsoe, Sidney Mitchell. I like those guys. Can they continue to develop? Because Bo Davis was one of the best. He was one of the best. I think he was a culture setter, tone setter. We all remember the video. We all remember the video of him yelling at some people think it was Tavondre Sweat, his video posting. They were laughing on the bus. He went off, essentially told him, hey, some specific words were used here. Hey, you can go get the F out of here if you want, if you don't want to be on board with us. You're either with us or against us. I think it was after the loss. Was it the Iowa State game? They lost. It was a road game. But that was Bo Davis going off. I think if I remember right, it was Tavondre Sweat. But nonetheless, they changed that culture last year. They were a tough physical team on both sides of the line of scrimmage. Credit to Kyle Flood and the offensive line as well. But Kyle Flood's back. So if I'm a Texas fan, I want to see how my guy, Kenny Baker, coming over from the Miami Dolphins, taking over for Bo Davis, who, who is a legend in his own right uh, on the defensive line. His coach with Nick Saban's been in Alabama, LSU, was with Texas with Mac Brown before. Uh, got in a little trouble with the NCAA, but he's back. But nonetheless, one of the best – Defensive line coaches there, there is out there. I think it's a big loss. Big loss. So how Kenny Baker takes over. Bit of a younger guy, a little bit younger than um, Coach Davis. But we'll see how it is. I think that's something I'm going to keep an eye on if I'm a Texas Longhorn fan hanging 24. I want to continue to see my defensive line take that next step. I, again, I don't know if you're, you can't. I don't know if you're going to be as good. I, I, I mean, I venture most people would say you're because you're missing the personnel. And some of that's not Kenny Baker's fault. But hey, Alfred Collins. Vernon Broughton. I want to see guys like that. Dre Bledsoe, Sadir Mitchell, the two Arizona transfers. Like I said, Tioli Savia and Bill Norton. I want to see those guys get better, especially as the year goes on. So I think that's where Texas is built. I think that's why Texas had success going into Bryant Denny Stadium last year and winning. They were good on both sides of the line of scrimmage. We all know if you followed the SEC and Texas fans were listening, you're not dumb. You've watched plenty of good football. You're a blue blood program, Tristan. You know what good football looks like. It starts up on it starts on both sides of the line of scrimmage on offense and defense, and that is specifically true in this league in the SEC. So Texas needs to continue that. That's a big burden to carry if you're Kenny Baker and they're putting that in um, essentially in your lap to continue that to build this defensive line unit to be a physical unit. That if Texas wants to continue to go to college football playoffs, compete for SEC titles, they're gonna have to do that. They're gonna have to do that. But I told you. I was going to give you a black and white record prediction. So let's go to the schedule, showing it on the screen. Opening up with Colorado State, the Rams, August 31st, heading to DKR. I think that that, that should be a win. And they got the big one, September 7th, at Michigan. Sharon Moore taking over the office coordinator for Jim Harbaugh as he departed for the Chargers. I, I, it's going to be an 11 a.m. kick at the Big House. I just think Texas is going to be better in Michigan. I think no offense to Sharon Moore. I think he's going to do a good job. I think they just lost too much. It's early in the game. Usually, true, so they don't play a lot of night games at Michigan, but this is a morning game, really. I think Texas is going to be ready. They're not going to be intimidated in this environment. They went to Bryant Denny Stadium last year. I think they're going to be fine here. UTSA should be a win. ULM should be a win. Mississippi State at home should be a win. Then they go into their bye week. And before I preface getting in after the bye week, heading into the Red River robbery, I think right here is, I think. Texas got a beneficial schedule for the from the SEC in their first year. I think this is where they may have got hurt a little bit, but it is what it is in this league. You're going to play tough games back back weeks. But Oklahoma and Dallas, and the very next week, you host the Georgia Bulldogs. You've won the national championship two of the last three years. You host the Georgia Bulldogs the very next week. So you're going to get up for that big rivalry game, big moment, big revenge game. You're trying to go get revenge off what Oklahoma and Dylan Gabriel did for you last year. I know Dylan Gabriel isn't on the team. He's at Oregon now, but Nonetheless, you're trying to get revenge on Brent Venables and that staff. Then you got to get your mind focused, win or lose. You're coming back home for one of the bigger home games in a long time. Georgia. So that, that, that's kind of the two games. They need to go one and one in that. You feel good if you're a Texas fan. Obviously, you want to get both. But you want one. You, you would like to get one. I think that's realistic. Then you head to Nashville at Vanderbilt. That'll be a fun experience for Texas's fan base, really. Other than that, that's it's going to be a win for the Horns. Then their second bye week, Florida at home. What will Florida and Billy Napier be look like about the second weekend in November? That'll be interesting. But I think it should be a win at home. At Arkansas, I know Arkansas got thumped in 2021. Uh, or Texas got thumped at Arkansas against Sam Pittman. Uh, and them in Fayetteville in 2021. But that was Sarkeesian's first year. I think things are going to be different this year. I could be wrong, but I, I, don't, I don't – I like Texas in this one. Kentucky, 
what will Kentucky be looking like there? Again, this is a team traditionally not overly deep. I like to look about I like to look when teams play each other. November 23rd is pretty late on the schedule. I think Kentucky's gonna be a pretty solid squad this year. I know a lot of people like to predict that every year, but it's a little bit of a compliment to what Mark Stoops and his program have done. Uh, they're going to have a good defensive front seven. That's going to be a fact. But they're not deep to my original point. You're, to my original point, you're playing them late in the year. Uh, they can be banged up a little bit. I kind of like where you get them, except it's the week before the A&M game. And that, uh, both fan bases are going to be fired up that. I'm talking Texas and Texas A&M. First game since 2011 back at Kyle Field. You don't want your guys looking ahead, but I think they get Kentucky to a nice spot, really, because I, Kentucky's inevitably going to have injuries just like everybody else. You're getting them late in the year, and sometimes they're not as deep as others. Uh, and they have some other question marks as well. But I think it's a very favorable schedule for Texas. I think, obviously, the ceiling would be 12-0. and 0. I mean, floor, probably 9-3. and three. You'd lose Oklahoma and Georgia and maybe slip up to A&M. Because I, I really don't – I mean, people are going to be, what about at Michigan? I really – I think Texas is just better in Michigan. Again, it's nothing to Coach Morris, Ron Moore, taking over first time, like I mentioned. I just think this early in the year, Texas isn't going to be intimidated uh, of being that. They've played in Big 12 titles under Steve Sarkeesian. They've played in Sugar Bowl. They've went to Bryant-Denny Stadium. They're past that point of, hey, are they ready for that big-time game? That, that's not it. They're just better than Michigan. So, with that being said, with that being said, what would be a successful season – for Steve Sarkeesian in 2024, heading into his first year in the SEC and Texas' his first year in the SEC in general, I think a playoff appearance, just a, just a playoff appearance, whatever that is, 10 and 2, 11 and 1, both should get you in the playoff appearance. And hey, let's continue to see the line of scrimmage on the defensive side of the ball. After we lost a big key uh, staff member in Bo Davis from a culture setter, a recruiter, a developer, one of the best defensive line coaches out there. It's unfortunate he went to an SEC rival in Texas. Uh, but what can Kenny Baker, new defensive line coach, again, like I mentioned, coming up for the Miami Dolphins, has been at Western Kentucky before. Young guys, probably going to relate. Well, can he develop some of the key guys they already have on campus? Let, let, let's see that again. You're not going to replace Devondre Sweat by remembering. But can – do we see development as the year goes on with guys like Vernon Broughton, uh, Tyolo Sevilla, uh, Bill Norton, Alfred Collins, Ray Bledsoe, Sadir Mitchell, guys like that. Do we see that development? Do we see that physicality continue on without Bo Davis? That is something outside of their black and white white record I would be looking at as a Texas fan. So you heard it. Development, continued development on the defensive line with new coach Kenny Baker and make the playoffs. Make the playoffs. Make the playoffs. I think that would be a successful season in 2024 for Steve Sarkeesian and the Texas Longhorns. Guys, I appreciate you joining us on this segment. Don't forget, I am your host, Dave Shoemate coming at you here. Uh, worked in college football nine, ten years in the personnel realm, four different SEC schools. Again, we're bringing you content all the time. So we're really getting into the football mode now. It's starting to get to that time. But we got college baseball regionals. Eleven SEC teams got in. Um, college basketball, NBA uh, draft entry entrance coming to a close today. Um, we got a lot going on. Got a lot coming on. SEC content coming at you 24-7, 365. Hit that like uh, button, subscribe, hit the notification bell. You don't want to miss any of the content coming at you. Again, guys, I appreciate you joining us. Have a fantastic day.